Today we've got a nice geometry problem, so let's dive right into the setup. So we've got a unit square, and then we add a diagonal from the left bottom to the right top of this unit square. Then we're going to add another line segment as well. It starts from the vertex down here at the bottom right, and then it intersects the top edge at its midpoint. And so since this is a unit square, that means that it intersects this and splits it into two line segments of length one half. And then we've got this natural triangle that's created in the bottom, and we inscribe a circle inside of that triangle. And our goal is to find the radius of this circle. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to do is give some names to some of these important points. So let's do that. Okay, so there we have it. I've named this point A, then we have B. The intersection of these two line segments is C, and then we have D and E. And now our first little goal is to show that triangle ABC and triangle CDE are similar. And we'll do that using the angle-angle-angle theorem. So let's observe that this angle CAB is kind of obviously a 45 degree angle. And that's because, well, it bisects this 90 degree angle, given that it's a diagonal of a square. But then that makes, for very similar reasons, this angle CED also 45 degrees. So I'll just put this purple arc for those 45 degree angles. And then observe that angle ACB and angle DCE are opposite each other. But opposite angles are always congruent, so that means these have the same measure as well. So I'll use orange to denote these angles. Okay, but then the sum of the angle measures of a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. So if we have two angles that are the same, then necessarily the third angles have the same measure. So that means here we have angle EDC, or CDE, is the same thing as angle ABC. Okay, so now putting all of this together, we get the similarity of these triangles. That is, we have triangle ABC is similar to triangle, let's see, CDE. Okay, nice. But then from this, we know that similar triangles have their side lengths in proportion. So in particular, that means that the length of AB over the length of DE is the same as, let's get the angles right, the length of AC over the length of CE. And that's because we're looking at two sides that are opposite the orange angle and then the brown angle. But then doing the same thing with the sides that are opposite the purple angle, we will see that, that this is also equivalent to the ratio of length BC over length CD. But now let's observe that we know one of these measures, or we know two of these measures. So AB over DE is one over one half. In other words, it's equal to two. So that tells us that, for instance, the length of AC is equal to two, the length of CE, and the length of BC is equal to twice the length of CD. So next up, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem a couple of times in order to find the actual lengths of all of these. Okay, so let's apply the Pythagorean theorem to this triangle BDE, which is clearly a right triangle from angle BED. So that's going to give us the length of the hypotenuse squared, which is the length of BC plus the length of CD quantity squared. I want to split it up into those two pieces just based off of that equation that I have over there. So anyway, the length of that hypotenuse squared is the same thing as 1 quarter plus 1, which is the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. But now we can replace BC with 2CD, and that'll give us 
3CD quantity squared equals 5 over 4. But then very quickly, we'll see that the length of CD is equal to the square root of 5 over 6. But then immediately we have that the length of BC is equal to twice that. In other words, the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so let's write some of those in right here. Right here. So we have this length CD, like I said, is the square root of 5 over 6. And then BC here is the square root of 5 over 3. Okay. So now we're gonna play the same game with this right triangle A, B, E. So the hypotenuse is given by A, C plus C, E. So we'll square that. And squaring that, we'll have the sum of the squares of the sides. But that's simply one squared plus one squared. In other words, it's equal to two. But now A, C plus C, E using this formula is three times C, E. So we have three times CE is equal to the square root of two. In other words, we have CE is equal to the square root of two over three, and thus AB is equal to two root two over three. Okay, so let's get those into the situation as well. So this CE, like I said, is the square root of two over three, and then this AC, sorry, this should have been an A, C is 2 times the square root of 2 over 3. Okay, so now we've completed the lengths of all of the necessary line segments, and we're ready to finish it off. Okay, so the way that we'll finish this off is with the following fact. And I think this fact is well known, so we won't derive it or anything. And that says that the radius of an in-circle of a triangle is equal to 2 times the area over the perimeter. So, well, the end circle, well, what do I mean by that? Well, that is a circle or maybe the unique circle that's inscribed inside of a triangle. Okay, nice. But let's observe that in order to find the area of a triangle, and well, we need the area of this triangle A, B, C. Well, we're going to need to know the base. So the base has length one as well as the height. So the height will be whatever goes from C down to AB and intersects perpendicularly. So let's draw a line that does that. So if we draw a line from C down to this intersection with AB so that it intersects at a right angle, then we'll also extend this up and it'll intersect at a right angle up here as well. Oh, but notice that the heights of these triangles will be in the same proportion as all of their lengths. So these two heights must add up to one, and since they're in a one to two proportion, that means that the length of this height is one third, and then the length of the, or the height of the triangle in question is two thirds. So now we're really ready to do it. To do it. So let's look at our triangle. So the area will be one half base times height. So that's gonna be one half. We have the base is equal to one and then the height is equal to two thirds. So in the end, that's equal to one third. And then the perimeter will be, well, that's just gonna be the sum of all of these. So here we'll have one plus 2 root 2 over 3 plus root 5 over 3. So putting all of this together into our formula, what do we have? So we're going to have area, which is 2 thirds, or I should say twice area in the numerator, over the perimeter. So 1 plus 2 root 2 over 3 plus root 5 over 3. But then maybe rearranging some things, we'll have 2 over 3 plus 2, plus 2 root 2 plus root 5. And there we have it. I think that's maybe the nicest form for this radius. And that's a good place to stop. 
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.